This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at the annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, joined now by Dr. Julie Graylow, the Jill Bennett Professor and Director of Breast Medical Oncology at the University of Washington and the Seattle Cancer Alliance, also a member of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Hello, Dr. Graylow. Hi, Selma. Now, on behalf of the adjuvant uh, therapy, there's a lot of buzz going on at this meeting uh, involving tamoxifen. Let's talk a bit about uh, that. Tamoxifen in early stage breast cancer. Should you be on it for your whole life is the question. So the ATLAS trial was presented, and that was a trial that compared five years of tamoxifen, which has been the standard for decades with 10 years of tamoxifen. Now we had a small uh, study uh, that was done previously that we thought had settled this. Uh, a study of five versus 10 years of tamoxifen done by the NSABP that had showed that five years seemed optimal. 10 years was no better and gave you more side effects. When was that study? That was a long time ago now. I actually don't recall the year that that was released, but that was a long time ago. We've been giving five years of tamoxifen for a long time. But that study was actually a low-risk group of women, no negative women. So not a lot of recurrence has happened in the study. So you don't have a lot of room to show a difference if the recurrence rate is low. So uh, a couple of trials, the ATLAS trial, which has been presented here at this meeting, and the ADAM trial, which we'll see the results of in the near future, were trials of longer versus shorter tamoxifen. They didn't believe that they had answered the questions. And, and I heard that even the NSABP statisticians who had released that trial I told you about that kind of settled the five years, they said, they didn't have real statistical certainty that this was the right answer for all women either. So they encouraged trials of longer tamoxifen and to be done. when did this, the ATLAS trial, begin? Long time ago. We have more than, uh, well, from the time that women first started their tamoxifen, we have a good 15 years of follow-up. So I think the ATLAS trial has been ongoing for, you know, more than a decade for sure. Takes, you know, the good news is that the event rates are low, and you need to do your analysis after you have enough events to show a difference. So that's the good news, is that women are surviving breast cancer, and they're not having recurrences, and they're not having deaths. So that means that it takes longer to get answers. That's also the frustrating news, because we don't get the answers fast enough. So the results of the ATLAS trial showed 10 years was better. Overall, in absolute terms, it reduced recurrences and deaths by 20 to 30%, uh, reduced deaths by about the same magnitude. So that's absolute terms. That sounds high, but if you take it in, um, sorry, that was relative terms. Uh, if you take it in absolute terms, it's about a 3% difference for the group as a whole. 3% reduction in recurrences or deaths. So for some women who have very high recurrence risk, that will be a lot more than 3%. Mm -hmm. And those women undoubtedly do benefit from longer endocrine therapy. But for women with negative lymph nodes or lower risk, they have much less than a 3% benefit. And the side effects of an extra five years of tamoxifen likely outweigh the risks. We definitely saw that there was a 1% absolute increase in uterine cancer. You gotta weigh that against the reduction in breast cancer. You, I know, have been following the advocates uh, and what they're blogging about and tweeting about. Uh, tell us what you've been observing in regards to their reaction to this news. Well, it's been very interesting to see the advocates' presence at this meeting, which is even is stronger than ever. You know, I've been um, doing the Hot Topics mentor session of the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation for years, and it just was huge last night when I did that session, and we talked a lot about the ATLAS trial. So I. I'm on Twitter and I do follow several breast cancer advocates on Twitter and I've been following the hashtag SABCS for the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. And this came out and all the scientists were saying statistically sound evidence to support longer tamoxifen and the advocates were saying, oh my gosh, five more years of hot flashes and night sweats. Do I really need right. to take this? What does this really mean? A 3% absolute difference. Is that 
what it's going to be for me? Do I really need to keep taking it? So there's been a lot of discussion about this, uh, and it is true that it is statistically sound that there is a benefit. But if there's a 3% absolute difference in recurrences, that means you give the drug an extra five years for 100 patients to benefit three women. So you, we need to sort out who are those three women or who are the highest risk patients that still have a risk of relapse after five years of tamoxifen. And do prolonged endocrine approaches in them. If they're premenopausal, we, I would recommend five more years of tamoxifen. If they become postmenopausal, I'd give an aromatase inhibitor based on an older NCI Canada mm -hmm. MA17 mm -hmm. trial of five years of Femara after five years of tamoxifen. Do you think there's going to be resistance because of the physical difficulty that patients have on tamoxifen? I'll tell you, a lot of my patients, it's hard for me to even get them to five years. Right. And I definitely have some who, after a couple of years, say, I just do not feel like myself. I, I need to go off. And uh, they try very hard to be on it. So I think it depends on how you feel. Some women have a marked deterioration in their quality of life on the drug, and they are unlikely to be excited about continuing it longer. But if, we we, right. if they're a high-risk group, then they might be willing to do it, looking at the data. But if you have a good quality of life on tamoxifen and don't have a lot of side effects, then you know, there might be some benefits, so why wouldn't you stay on it? it? It's all about how you feel and what kind of side effects you're getting from this drug, and that varies mm -hmm. widely. This needs to be a real discussion between the patient, understanding how she feels on the drug and what the drug is doing to her and the physician and really trying to look at the data and what is the residual risk of relapse in a, a given patient after five years of tamoxifen. We need to, to try to individualize the recommendation. Well, I just have a, a visual in my head right now of a doctor sitting with a patient saying, well, we're going to go for another five years. I, I, I just, I feel for the patient in that moment who wants to run out the door and say, I'm done. Absolutely. I, that's absolutely going to happen. And the advocates are asking last night at the Alamo uh, Hot Topics mentor session, you know, they saw all the press, which all said favorable, favorable, statistically right. significant. They said, who's going to do the articles and the papers that actually put in perspective all the risks and all the benefits and put the quality of life into it? So let me ask you, since we have an opportunity in this interview to be able to help women think this through, what would be the key questions when a woman now is going to go meet with her doctor to be addressing to help assess whether or not they should consider another five years? Well, I think a key question to ask is, what do you think, now that I'm finishing my five years of tamoxifen, my residual risk of recurrence is over the next five to 10 years? And actually, the adjuvant online program that Peter Ravden developed, you've interviewed him many times, has a little risk calculator for the question about should you take Femara after five years of tamoxifen if you're postmenopausal. And we can use a calculator like that where you plug in what was the tumor size, what was the lymph node status, right. you know, some information about what's the patient's age and all of those kinds of things to help calculate what's the residual risk of recurrence, how much of my recurrence is now gone mm -hmm. since I've survived five years and I've taken five years tamoxifen and how much mm -hmm. remains. That's the first question. The second question is saying, here's the side effects I think tamoxifen's causing. Do you think that all of these side effects are really due to tamoxifen or are some of them due to the chemo I had or other things going on? And, and frankly, I will frequently recommend a couple month trial off tamoxifen to sort out what side effects the tamoxifen mm -hmm. itself is causing versus all the residual from all the other cancer treatment plus aging, you know, just causing side effects. And you can see how you feel off the tamoxifen. And if some of the side effects you were blaming on tamoxifen actually don't get any better or go away after a little bit, a couple of month break from it, then you can't really blame the tamoxifen for it, you know. So you might consider going back on tamoxifen if you thought some of your side effects were related to it, but they don't go away when you go off of it, if, if you would have a significant benefit in recurrence reduction. Thank you, Dr. Gray, though. Mm -hmm. I love our overviews with you. You touch on so many important things and your research 
awfully important. Thanks for having me, Selma, and thanks for everything that you do for all of your viewers. Dr. Julie Graylo, the Jill Bennett Professor and Director of Breast Medical Oncology at the University of Washington and the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, also a member of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Thanks again, Dr. Graylo. Thanks, Selma.